feeling the heart of the Holy Land. This is a live vlog from our journey in the Holy Land. We just got through a traffic jam at a checkpoint on our way back from the Samaritan mountain of Mount Grazim to uh, where we're staying in Bethlehem, Bethlehem tonight. Enjoying some beautiful music from our friend and driver, there. Well, hi everybody. Here we are cruising along in the West Bank. We did get delayed by a checkpoint, but we're moving on. Yesterday, we had a uh, difficult event. Some of our folks were uh, walking through a particular neighborhood and there was some boys and they tossed some rocks and garbage and so on. So that created a little tension and emotionality and peacemakers constantly have to deal with the fact that they're not winning popularity contests. Um, but that we're here to just stay centered, not always to be cool, calm, and collected, and underneath it all we know that we're loving beings and we're trying to share that. Here. Yeah. Oh, we're back. We feel uh, pain and, and uh, little difficulties, trauma, and so on. Today we went into the West Bank, which is where we are now, and um, we had most remarkable experience, we went to the Samaritan International Peace Center and the Samaritans are a small group, only uh, about 700, that believe that Moses um, and Abraham and so on had their religious experiences on Mount Grazim, which is an, uh, another mountain in the West Bank. By the way, the West Bank is known as the place of prophets because so many of the prophets were in this part of the ancient world and um, there are a lot of holy places here. But we, we spent some time with the um, teachers, I guess, of the uh, Samaritans and it was remarkable. And then we walked to a, uh, the top of Mount Grazim and felt the timeless energy of spirit and and kind of the foundation of religion and it was very definitely uh, a feeling of um, love and awakening great power there was a ruins of a crusader church there and more and more we see every day the religions of the holy land kind of um, lapping up to each other historically and I was just thinking how many centuries of working things out have already passed and um, lest we forget a lot of the difficulty is political it's not religious even though the religions are an excuse for the difficulties but the difficulties clearly are political and not religious so we um, are constantly working to both learn more and to connect um, people of the different religions who hold the value of understanding with each other. And that's what we're doing. So um, we're going to keep it somewhat short today and a couple of other people wanted to speak um, because we are traveling and reception's not only the best. So Deborah is going to come up and share some thoughts or impressions. Uh, what was most interesting to me, uh, as Chahabuddin was saying, was the Samaritan village, um, having grown, grown up with uh, some pretty substantial Jewish education as an American Jew, um, had only heard Samaritan mentioned as far as the Good Samaritan, I think, in, in the Gospels. But um, I learned, and, and I, I didn't know what we were coming into when we uh, 
went to this International Peace Center of the Samaritan Village, uh, I was thinking it was some kind of a sect that I, I just didn't know. As we walked through the building, there was an open door. We were heading to a meeting room. But there was an open door and children were studying, some, some maybe eight or ten boys were studying around a table with a teacher and I mumbled to myself to no one in particular, it looks like a cheder, which is the traditional study for Jewish children, but thinking, well, it's obviously not a cheder because these aren't Jewish children. Then we go into the meeting and learn, in fact, this is a group that practices the very ancient form of Judaism, and the man who was speaking to us was Jewish. Well, no, he was Samaritan, but, but many of the practices are the same, and I felt a, a interesting I identification with him. Um, uh, there, at, the, at the end, on our way out, I heard more children inside of a room, and it turns out they were, um, I always go where the children are making noise, and they were making noise with a teacher who happened to be wearing a clown costume. And uh, of all things, um, I happened to bring with me on this trip about 65 clown noses, which were waiting to be received by someone, by some children. And so I ran into the van and, and got a bunch of clown noses and put one on myself and walked into the room where the children were <coughs> dancing with this clown who had no clown nose. So I gave them the clown nose and they put on their clown noses and I gave them a tambourine and they had a little instrument to play. And it's like children everywhere are children everywhere and clown noses are clown noses and people can enjoy them everywhere. That's my story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful, thank well, you. Thank you so much, Devorah. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to remind everybody we um, what we're doing here, although we're a group and we're with each other, it, there are times when it's kind of lonely. There's a collective loneliness here. So your uh, thoughts and, and comments under the... the um, uh, blog have really been helpful and we read them aloud and if you want to share something um, so think of us and I'm sure you all know we're representing all of you whether we know you or don't know you and um, it's it's you know it's complex here it's old and uh, what we learned today about the Samaritans as Devorah said well then they're, they're not Jewish but they're Jewish they read the Torah, they, they have Shabbat, they have the oldest Torah in the world, and they're Samaritans. They are the receivers of a certain kind of teaching and a certain kind of blessing. So that's it for me. I don't have much more for today. Um, Akbar, you usually like to get the last word. Hi, everybody. So it's just been a real privilege to witness so many of these incredibly powerful holy sites that are really the founding points and the bedrock of many of the world's faiths. Um, the Samaritans built their community, one of their two communities, existing now 3,600 years after the founding of their religion on Mount Grizim, the mountain of blessings. and you can really feel it. You can feel it on that mountain. And we all remarked, I'll give you a little of the footage here of, as we're driving, we all remarked that as you see this landscape and you're walking through or driving through the Holy Land, you see this rocky terrain, hilly, covered in scrub. It just really brought me and others back into the feeling of the, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the, uh, the, the tales of the different religions and the stories and the, the lives of the prophets that walked these lands, whose blessings, are, you know, are, form the basis for this spiritual peacemaking that the Abrahamic reunion does. So connecting in has been a, a very beautiful experience. Uh, here we've got another... Uh, uh, We've got another something from Shahabadin would like to say here. Just very quick, um, you know, it turns out this work is really expensive. Send prayers and send some money. Um, we, we really are putting it to good use. I can promise you that. Oops, oh, I guess that's my thumb. 
So, thanks everybody, and um, much love and blessings. Back to me. So, tomorrow, what we have planned is we're gonna wake up early, and I'm gonna take my thumb off of the camera, <laughs> hopefully in a metaphorical sense as well. Um, and we're going to drive to the south. We're going to meet with Imam Khalil Al-Baz, who is the, the um, co-director, the co-chair of the Abrahamic Reunion Israel, the Amuta, the nonprofit here. He's a Bedouin who has been himself displaced. He's experienced displacement. And he's going to take us to a village, a Bedouin village that's been constructed and flattened, leveled over 130 times. And we're going to learn about the situation affecting the Bedouins and pray with them, be with them, support them. Um, and we'll travel to, to some other sites uh, in the Negev and the south. So we'll be with Imam Khalil al-Baz. And um, I mention our other events? We'll talk to you tomorrow. Our other events, we're, we're going we're gonna to see our other co-chair, Rabbi uh, Yaakov Nagen, dear, dear friend. So we have, we have other really beautiful and powerful events. We're going to spend the day with Eliyahu McLean, and we're going to be uh, praying. I do want to say that, that there have been a lot of really intense and powerful experiences here, even just witnessing all the different variations of lifestyles. It's so complex. There's so many facets and so many aspects to understanding how all the different peoples here relate to each other religiously, politically, or even interact with each other around food or eating together. It's been a, a, an extremely beautiful practice to be here so far. So tomorrow we have a big event, peacemaking event in the Negev. And uh, I'll just close off with a little footage of the landscape here. We've got some particularly beautiful landscape at dusk. Can you turn the music up a little bit? So just so, flood his inbox. Yeah, yeah, really. With birthday wishes. Yeah. Happy birthday, Sheikh Hassan, really. Okay, we're getting off. Much love to everybody. 